Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at uh, sketching the gradient function, which is one of the uh, earlier lessons or introductions of calculus. And it's funny, when you start calculus, you probably look at two of the more challenging concepts before going on to the main parts of derivatives and integration, which often is easier than actually what you start with. Um, the first lesson, hopefully you've looked at the introduction of calculus, um, looking at the uh, at, at differentiation from first principles. This is looking at sketching the gradient function. So the gradient function. So let's talk about the gradient function for a moment. What is a gradient? Well, from that last lesson, we looked at the gradient, which is, I guess, the rate of change, or looks at the rate of change, particularly for a, uh, a parabola or a curve. Um, we know that the rate of change um, differs at each point. You know, um, and that's why obviously finding uh, the gradient at a particular point becomes difficult because that particular point changes the whole way through. Well, the gradient at that point changes, sort of say. So I'm going to look at a very uh, basic graph. Uh, let's say f of x is equal to x squared. So what does it mean by graphing the gradient function? Well, this is our, our actual normal function, okay, what we start with. So the gradient function looks at the rate of change or what's going on here with my graph. For example, if I look at the, the gradient of this particular graph f of x is equal to x squared, we can notice that at the moment on the left-hand side of the y-axis that this is all a negative gradient. Okay, It's all decreasing. So obviously it's a negative line. Obviously at this point here, it's a bit hard to see with that color pen, my apologies, this point here, <laughs> that's not very good either. Um, that point there, the gradient will be zero because that's my turning point. Okay, so that's my turning point of zero. And then on the right hand side of the y axis, you can see that my gradient turns into a positive value. Okay, so it's decreasing from left to right and then it increases. So what I'm asking to graph the, uh, the gradient function, what it's asking me to do is to draw another graph. And it's going to ask me to draw the graph of that gradient. So let's have a look. This is, I guess, the point, the origin is the point zero. Okay, and I guess to be honest, you know, this is my gradient of zero. So if I look at the gradient of zero here, that's going to be the same point there. We know it's going to go through that point. Anything above the x-axis will represent a positive gradient. And anything below the x-axis, okay, where my y values are negative, that would re represent a negative gradient. And I know that this might sound difficult at first, but you will get the hang of it. Um, although I still will say it's one of the more challenging parts of of, uh, of the introduction of calculus, anyway. Um, okay, so let's look at my graphing. For my left to right of this point zero, we can see that my graph is decreasing. So it's less than zero. You can see the very first part, it's actually a steep negative gradient or a larger negative gradient. And then it slowly gets closer and closer and closer to zero. So how could I represent that on this particular graph? Okay, well, we know it's getting it's it's a negative. So these are my negative values. So let's say for example, I might do this a different color pen. Oops, it's going to be negative, 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 negative. This is where the point is zero, because that's where the gradient is zero. But then any other to that side, we know that it's positive. So the positive is above, so watch what happens. So it's going to go up. Now, this kind of looks like the graph of y equals x. But what you can see here, and I know this is challenging, that this direction here is where I've got a negative gradient. Now this is a big value obviously, like let's say for example, I know it's not going to be this, but let's say that's a value of 10 as opposed to a value of 1. Okay, that's y equals 0, then sort of 1, and let's say that's up, up there is 10. At this point here, the, let's, it's sort of saying the gradient is 10, okay, or negative 10 should I say, negative 10. And now have a look at up here, up here, that means that this point up here would be about negative 10, which makes sense because that's a, it's quite a steep negative gradient. As opposed to the point here, which would be negative 1, so it's less steep, it's getting closer to 0, which would be the point sort of here. But again, it's less steep as opposed to that gradient up there. And then obviously we get to the y um, gradient of 0, which is my 0 point. 
Then I go up here, let's say the gradient is, is positive one, which would mean, you know, for example, might be here. And then obviously higher up would be 10. So you can see as you're going from left to right, this is simply graphing the gradient. As long as you're reading sort of these Y values, I guess, as the values of the gradient, okay, it's going to work out for you. So obviously, anything below the X axis will be negative Y values. That means it's going to be negative gradient values. The zero line where y equals zero or the x-axis is where my gradient it has a value of zero so I guess here this is going to be your turning points I'd say you know your turning points where you don't have a gradient and then above that we have a gradient but it's zero but above that you have your positive lines um, sounds a bit confusing I know it is but uh, but we'll get through there okay so let's have a look at a question sketch the gradient function for this particular graph now a lot of time what they'll do they'll simply just draw the graph okay for you and then you'll need to uh, redraw it I guess so what things are you concerned with when you get a question like this well the very first thing will be because we're sketching the gradient function the gradient we're going to be uh, interested with your actual gradient values so if I look at my graph here we've got negative 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 then we've got that value of zero. Positive, 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 positive. That point, which is zero. Negative, 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 negative. That was my turning point of zero. Positive, 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 positive. Three very important points that you should note here are your turning points. I said earlier that your turning points always have a gradient of zero because you have a change of direction. So you have to have a gradient of zero, which means that when I'm looking at my graph, and, and usually probably would have been easier if I drew this underneath, but you can see here, for example, that's where my gradient is of zero. So that means that my point here would be on my x-axis because that's where the grade has a value of zero. Likewise, just on here, that's another gradient of zero. So my graph is going to come back to this exact point. And likewise, another turning point there, which means it's going to be approximately going to be around about here. So I know my graph is going to hit the x-axis in these three places because that's where the gradient is zero. Remember I said, although we still call this the y-axis, that basically is the values of your gradient. So, you know, pos high positive, zero, low positive. So, low positive, low negative. So, you know, negative, can't really spill there, positive, and then that x axis is zero. Let's have a look what it is before then. So, you can see here that to the left hand side of that zero gradient, it's negative. So, this means it should be under the line. But then it hits that line and then it becomes positive until it hits that line again and then becomes negative. So you can sort of see this part here is very important because that's why it goes from zero, positive, but back to zero, which basically means it's doing this. My zero line, it's going from zero, it goes, it's all positive, steep positive, then less positive, less positive, back to zero, which makes sense because here is quite steep, okay? It was getting steeper, it gets to the point and then tapers off again less steep to steep to, to less steep again obviously the values next left of that is zero so you can see that there they're my negative values so let's have a look at that again negative 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 which is negative 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 then it goes to zero zero then positive 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 and then gets back to negative again so this is where I am now okay so we're back to zero now look it's my where my gradient is zero now it goes negative 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 back to zero then positive which means that it needs to sort of go down here however low and then goes back to zero again it's going zero below the negative line back to zero so zero below the negative line back to zero and then it's positive on the other side so let's just make it keep on going up there I hope you're with me. I know this is hard and it probably isn't the best explanation. Um, but you can certainly see again that the gradient to the left of that 
first point or that first turning point where the gradient is zero, hence it's there because that's zero, it's a negative values, which means that you can see here, this is a negative line. Okay, it's in the negative values, like negative one, negative two, negative three, if I put the values there. Then to the right of that turning point, they're all positive values until I get to that second turning point of zero, which means, as you can see here, that's all positive. Okay, they're all positive. Now, I know you think, hold on, that looks like a negative line, but remember, we're not thinking about it. We're thinking about the gradient being above zero, which is all positive values. For example, it might be one, two, three. Okay, so it's, it's hard to understand. I, I understand that. Okay, but again, if you start by doing your negatives, your positives, finding out your turning points where it's going to be zero, labeling on your x-axis, you're going to be um, a little bit better off. Okay, last one, last question. Um, hopefully, you're still with me. It is a difficult one to explain. Well, difficult for me to explain. Okay, so let's start off again. So each time, the best thing is to mark your negative or positive gradients. Okay, so positive, 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 turning point of zero. Negative, 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 turning point of zero. Positive, 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 positive. Okay. Number two, note your turning points. And label on your gradient function graph. That's why I usually always start. After I've drawn this, these positive negative lines, okay, and my obviously my turning points, I note where the turning points are. For example, that's a turning point, so there's a gradient of zero, which means at that turning point here, we've got a value of zero. Remember thinking that this is sort of your gradient values. These are your positives, zero, these are your negatives. So that's my first turning point. My second turning point is approximately, it's hard to see. Again, it's probably easy if you do it underneath, but it's okay. It's probably about there. Now you can see that between these two um, turning points, it's all negative, which basically means this. Basically, okay? Which means, because it's all negative values. To the left of it, it's all positive. Okay, so it means it's sort of going like this. To the right of the turning point, it's all positive. And what you kind of start to look like you've got, it kind of looks like a parabola. Where again, these are all your positive values. Remember, I know it looks like a negative line, but remember we're talking about positive gradient. Is It's all above the point zero, which means these are all positive gradients. Then we have the negative gradients going back to the positive gradients, which you can see here. Positive, okay, goes into negative and then back into positive. So again, each time it's probably a good point to start with your two turning points, label them on your uh, on your x-axis at the point y equals zero. Remember, y sort of represents the gradient, and then start to work from there. Often it's easy to look at your two turning points and graph what's in between them, and then graph what's beside them. Okay, look, I know that isn't particularly a great explanation. I hope it's been of some use to, and it's made some sense. I think the best thing to do is to grab your book, have a look at the examples that they provide with you, and just have a go. Have a go at sketching some of these questions. Um, certainly uh, have a look at your answers and work to, to those questions. Um, look, I'm at 14 minutes. So I probably should stop there. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a bit bored if you're still with me. Uh, fantastic. I, I really hope it's made some sort of sense. If it hasn't, if it's all gobbledygook, please leave a comment, and I'll certainly try to do this lesson again. Thanks, guys.